my beloved brothers, the youth who are seated here this morning, currently we are facing many challenges in the Ummah, the greatest of which is the hatred that we have for one another. This is in contradiction to the teachings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa We need to check our hearts because if we continue this way, the cancerous elements will result in that cancer spreading in a way that we will be destroyed within ourselves. No external enemy needs to try and ignite things. It's enough. Our hearts are so dirty, so dirty, that it's enough for us to tackle one another and destroy one another. So one of the biggest things you and I need to do is check your heart and remove the hatred for anyone who says the shahada, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. If the person says that, remove hatred from your heart for that particular person. So much so that entire humanity are your brothers and sisters in humanity. That's what you need to understand. Your duty towards them is to spread the deen to them and goodness to them. And it is not to harm them. This is a misconception that is spreading across the globe. That if someone is not a Muslim, you're supposed to harm them. You're supposed to act bad to them. You are supposed to be hateful to them. No, you might not like the drinking of a drunkard, but you are supposed to have hope that he can quit that bad habit. Because we all have bad habits. So if we were to hate one another because of a bad habit, we would all be hating one another. And that's what's happening. So today a person picks on you because of your bad habit and you pick on them because of their bad habit and we are destroyed. Allahu Akbar. Everyone hates one another. Have you noticed the intolerance in the ummah is at a peak? At a peak meaning we have so many groups in our midst. Each one is literally fighting the other. And this is terrible. When we hear people talking about others, we should understand that they have nothing themselves to present. So they are now speaking about other people. If you want to speak positive about others, Alhamdulillah, it's a lesson we can learn something good. The minute you want to start defaming and, you know, attacking and so on others, you are sowing the seeds of hatred in the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If really you have a problem, you may discuss it on a high level. You may meet the brother or the sister or whoever you have to meet, discuss the matter. Ultimately, you may agree to disagree if it's not resolvable, but you do not spread the seeds of hatred and destruction in the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Your duty is to look after the unity of the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Your duty is to correct. Listen to this carefully. Your duty is to correct in a beautiful manner those who are making error in a way that when you make an error, they too will correct you in a beautiful manner. A man walked into the masjid and he peed in the house of Allah. He urinated in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Picture for a moment a man walking in here right now and coming into this corner and peeing. What would happen? What would happen before he sees his pee, he will see his grave. Allahu Akbar. It's a fact. Because that's the attitude we have. We don't realize it happened in front of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, whom we claim to follow. We claim. It's still a claim. We need to prove the claim before we die. Really, we all claim. It's, it's just a claim. It's an utterance. This is why they say Iman starts off by saying the Shahada and then by believing it in your heart and showing it with all your organs. You know, working towards it. If you just claim it and, and you are moving in a different direction altogether, then what is the point? So we need to learn to love one another. My brothers and sisters, we need to learn to love one another. I can say that for one hour, repeat it for one hour and then go away. Subhanallah. That's how important the topic is. We want to build leaders from the youth. We will never have leaders. What are you going to lead? You will lead a pack of two or three people. That's all. We will lead a small pack. Each one has his own scrum. So it's like a rugby match. We, our scrums meet and we are plugged in together and each one is jostling for the ball. Allahu Akbar. It's not about power. It's not about authority. It's not about wealth. It's not about position. It's not about popularity and fame. If that comes by the way, Alhamdulillah, it's from Allah. If it doesn't come, Alhamdulillah, it's from Allah. But you just do the work. That's what it is. Do the work. 
for the sake of Allah. If Allah grants it acceptance in a different way, Alhamdulillah. Some people are working harder than myself and yourselves and they are not known. Unknown people. And some people are working not hard at all and they are famous across the globe. Some people cause destruction and they are famous. Allahu Akbar. And some people are building bridges. No one knows who they are. Some people donate large amounts of money that benefit a lot of people. No one knows who they are. And other people donate a thousand rupees and they want to be known completely. Look, I'm the boss. But my man, the guy right next to you donated a million and no one knows. So these are the different types of people you have. But at the same time, what we need to know, we will never ever be able to progress as an ummah if we have hatred for one another. So that's point number one. You cannot hate your brother just because he married the woman whom you had in your head to marry. Too late. I'm sorry, my brother. And wallahi, this is what people are doing. I don't like this guy. Why? I was supposed to marry that girl. Come on. Allah has planned something. Who are you? Maybe Allah has someone better in place for you. And you are battling, you are fighting with it. I don't like this brother because he became imam of the masjid that I wanted to become imam of. What leadership is going to happen tomorrow? Who are you going to lead? Our leaders of tomorrow, the youth. Where? May Allah forgive us. We, we run behind things that are not going to help us at all. When you want a motor vehicle, work hard to earn and then purchase it. No harm. Work hard to earn. You know, those who have bought houses and cars and so on, a lot of them have worked for 20, 30, 40 years before they even saw the first vehicle that they owned. Really? But with us, we are still 18. How did the uncle buy the car? Oh, he must have stolen the money. Okay, let me go and steal as well. So we want to pinch. We want to engage in bad behavior. And this brings me to point number one. If you'd like to lead, you need to cut out bad qualities. Leadership qualities. You know, Drugs is being promoted, nudity is being promoted, pornography is being promoted, adultery is being promoted, promiscuity is being promoted. So many bad things are being promoted. Do you know why? One of the reasons is to knock you out so that you no longer have leadership qualities. That's it. Wallahi, that's one of the reasons. They calculate it. They get into countries that they feel you know, this country has powerful people who may lead, come out as leaders. And what will they do? Promote the drugs, promote the nightlife. If you are a person who's in the club every day, you will not lead anyone. You'll just lead the bottle of alcohol to your, to your lips. That's all. So I'm a big leader. Leading what? Leading the bottle to my mouth. May Allah forgive us. And you perhaps know how to dance. Big deal. Know how to dance. Dancing will lead you where? You know, they say dancing will have to happen in Jahannam because the fire will make you dance. You know, when there is a fire and you're trying to protect yourself from it, you have to dance. But your salah will lead you to Jannah. There is sukoon, there is comfort, there is, you know, that serenity, there is stability. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah has instructed you to do things and if you do them the way he has instructed you, it will automatically show that this person has leadership qualities. You are disciplined. You get up early morning. You only eat specific food, specific time. You speak well with everyone. You respect people. You try to follow rules and regulations. You are disciplined completely. You have leadership qualities. So people want you to turn away from Islam. So they start questioning you. They start putting thorns upon your path. They start distracting you. So if you become distracted and you no longer have rules and regulations, no more discipline, you do as you please, you cannot be a leader. Even at your workplace, those who work for you will quit. If it wasn't for the salary they were getting, they would have quit a long time ago. No one would want to talk to you. No one would want to mix with you. You'd only become part of a gang, a gang that does similar activity. And what do you achieve? Nothing. Take a look at the divorce rates today. We cannot even lead our own homes. Where are we going to lead the ummah? Allahu Akbar. Really, it's a fact. Divorce rate is so high, so high. It goes beyond 50% in a lot of cases. You know, when people get married, before we used to say, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you long years, you know, from as, as they say, till death do us part. You know, 
in Islam, we would, that would be understood without even saying it. But today you have to make a dua, Oh Allah, protect this marriage from breaking. Before the dua was, Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, grant them many years of happiness. Correct. Now you've got to add something, Oh Allah, protect it from being broken. I know of marriages that have broken the day of the marriage, a few minutes later, a few hours later. I'm not blaming one of the two parties. We don't know who is to blame. It's different sometimes. But the reality is if we had those qualities, we would, we would be able to know what we are doing. You have rules, regulations. People would live with you. They would. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us, really. So learn to remove the hatred from within the heart. Learn to be disciplined. And this is what will help you. And this is what will help you to help others. Learn to be concerned about other people. Today we have non-Muslims around who are watching us. A lot of us seated here may have been non-Muslims either ourselves or somewhere down our forefathers. What happened? Some Muslimin were kind enough to present Islam in a good way and that's why our forefathers became Muslim. Correct. That's why we became Muslim. What about us? We look at them and say, hey, this guy here, no, no, no. We, you know, we are dying in floods. Just leave them, let them die. That's not the attitude. If there are floods, we reach out to everyone. We reach out to the animals as well. If there is a need, humanitarian crisis, you reach out to humanity, human beings. That's a leader. You have to have a lot of tolerance, a lot of tolerance. When you're a leader, yes, you will have your view and so on, but you will have to listen to other opinions. They may be better than yours. You cannot just be a dictator and come up and say, look, this is me. That's it. No, I'm the one. Listen to the others. Yes, you will. If you are the leader, you will. You might have to make the decision correct, but it must be a decision that's based on something, something good. Decision that you firmly feel is the better of the decisions that you heard. So this is why you have what is known as a shura in Islam. You know, the consultation and a consultative council. Very important. When you have important decisions to be made in life, consult, speak to people. One of the most important decisions you can make is the decision of getting married. How many of us actually consult before getting married? After hearing last night's talk, you must be thinking a lot of us consult Facebook before we get married. You know, A lot of us consult our phones before we get married. No, I'm talking here of real life people. Consult, ask them. And explain your view and continue explaining and say what you have to subhanallah and listen to what they have to say they might have a brilliant opinion so my beloved brothers let's understand something if you'd like to be a leader you need to have leadership qualities you need to have a genuine feeling for those you want to lead you need to have a feeling for them they will think differently from you they will have different positions they will have different ideas they will be inclined to different things. They will be in different fields. We need to have an understanding. We need to tolerate them. We need to look at them with the eye of love and care. Really, those who hate you, do you love them? Question. Those who dislike you and hate you, do you feel for them some form of goodness? If you do, inshallah, you're heading in the right direction. If you don't, you become one of them. It's over. You know, people will dislike you because you have wealth, because you have authority, because you have anything they don't have. Shaitan comes to them and makes them utter words about you. Makes them say things, makes them hate you openly and even inside. Big time hate. Do you need to do the same? No, you don't need to do the same. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the kuffar. And Allah says, the munafiqeen or the hypocrites, Allah says, they would love that you disbelieve in the same way that they disbelieve so that you both can be the same. You can be in the same boat. They want you to drop. So Allah says, don't do that. Don't befriend such people. Have a good circle of friends. If you want to be a leader, you need to make sure your company has similar focus in life. Really, if you want to become, for example, a doctor and you have 
uh, people around you who are totally discouraging you because they, they don't even take school seriously. They don't even take studying seriously. You are in the wrong company. But if you have people who have similar ideas, then it will become so easy for you to go to school and to work hard because everyone around you is working very hard. You're encouraged. The same applies with Salah. My beloved brother, you want to be a leader. You need to submit to your owner. If you want to be a leader, you need to submit to your owner. Who is your owner? Allah. If I did not submit to my owner, how can I lead? What am I going to lead? Who am I going to lead? What is going to happen? So if you do not fulfill your salah, you cannot get up for salatul fajr. What discipline do you have to be able to discipline others? When you're a leader, you will need to discipline people. You will need to show them by example. They want to follow you. They, they, they want to look at you and say, wow, that's our leader. But how would you be able to lead when you yourself have no rules and regulations to follow? How will they follow the rules that you lay? They won't. In your own home, I'm talking about. You want to be a ruler. You want to be, for example, a leader in your own house as a father, as a brother or whoever it is, you know, an elderly figure, a slightly older figure or whoever you are. You can be young as well. But as you develop and grow, you will become an automatic leader when they see responsibility in you. When they see that this person has not been trapped by the lights around him or her. When they see that this person has not been ensnared by everything that is trying to trap the person from around. Subhanallah, you are still focused. You still work hard. You have your salah. You have a good way of speaking. A leader is not derogatory in his speech. May Allah forgive us all. Myself as well. May Allah make us conscious of how we speak. A leader does not use cheap words, does not use swear words. A leader would actually make sure that he says words that are beautiful, powerful, good, meaningful, beneficial. These are the words you say. So make sure the words you use are good. Use beautiful words and you will find people will automatically want to hear what you have to say. You will become a leader without you having asked to become a leader. You will be leading people in the right direction. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. So how is a person able to lead when he himself does not know the path? There is a path I want to walk on. I need to be walking on it for others to see that I'm walking on it and be able to walk upon the path. But if I don't know the path and I'm not able to walk on it myself, how is it possible for me to lead others to the same path? I am heading to hellfire and I want to lead people to paradise. This is why Allah says, لِمَا تَقُولُونَ مَا لَا تَفْعَلُونَ كَبُرَ مَقْتًا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَن تَقُولُوا مَا لَا تَفْعَلُونَ O oh, you who believe, why do you utter that which you don't do? It is a great sin in the eyes of Allah to utter that which you don't do. Which means to show hypocrisy. You're saying one thing and you're doing another thing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us. So my beloved youth, the, a beautiful example is that of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The one who was sent to us as a Nabi of Allah, the most blessed of creation, the most noble and the most high, the one free from all defects, the one whom Allah protected from bad habits and bad qualities from the very beginning. That is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Study his example. Look at how he led. Yet, when he was born, he was born an orphan. We spoke about this so many times. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was born an orphan. He grew up in conditions that had others had to grow up in similar conditions, they would have lost hope a long time ago. If others had to grow up in similar conditions, they would find it tough. But Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, no way. It was from Allah, protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as an example for mankind at large to follow. And Allah says it very clearly. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ Indeed, for you in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a beautiful example to emulate, to follow. Follow strictly. See, as he grew up, he was known as As-Sadiqul Amin, the truthful, the trustworthy. 
That is a quality of leadership. You want to lead, you must be truthful and trustworthy. If people cannot trust you, how are, they, how are you going to lead? Today in our own homes, our spouses do not trust us just because of how we use our mobile phone. You know, there was a couple that came to me once for counseling and the wife is saying, my husband smiles at his phone more than he smiles at me. So I said, well, you must communicate with him via the phone. Obviously, that was on a lighter note. But the truth is, that's exactly what happens. Sometimes we look at our phones and we are busy smiling. <laughs> and you look at your wife and say, what do you want? What are you looking at? Come on. Allahu Akbar. May Allah forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us. When Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was known as the trustworthy your own wife doesn't trust you. Your own husband doesn't trust you. Your children, your parents don't trust you. And the entire community who were enemies of Muhammad wasallam confirmed that this man never uttered a lie. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. You know, if your enemy can bear witness regarding something, then that is a virtue. That is a virtue. So with him, they had to admit that yes, he's a truthful man. He was known as honest, upright. They, they involved him before Nubuwa, before prophethood to solve some of their problems. They involved him. Why? He didn't ask, hey guys, involve me, I will solve your problem. No, they called on him. Who would call on any one of us to solve their problems? In fact, if they brought us in, we would create a problem. It happens. May Allah forgive us. So look at how far we've gone. And this is why I say, all we need to do to have leadership qualities, follow Islam. This is why Islam is being fought on a global level because people know that when we drift them away from their deen, we've drifted them away from discipline and leadership qualities. That's all. So they want you to have an earring. They want you to tattoo half of your body. They want you to change your gender. They want you to engage in behavior that is unacceptable. For example, they want you to marry a dog and a pig. And they want you, for example, to become a person who is, uh, whose genes are halfway down the backsides. And they want you to be a person whose hairstyle is such that it's cut in lines where some is shaved and some is not. Have you ever seen a world leader looking like what I just described now? And you think, I'm cool, man, I'm cool, you know, <laughs> bouncing. They've just destroyed you totally, completely thrown you out and they're so happy, they'll excite you. In some countries, you know, they give a monthly stipend to some of the citizens. Those who have done some of what I've just mentioned now, they give them a higher amount, a bigger amount. Did you ever know that? Because they're so happy with them to say, wow, you did the right thing. You can get right out. I'm so happy that you're not going to compete with leadership here that I'll pay you 20 pounds more. Allahu Akbar. And they'll convince you to say you're doing the right thing. Wow, you're brave. You make the news. You can win the Nobel Award. You know what Nobel means? You've got no bell. Nothing rings in your head. Allahu Akbar. No bell at all. Allahu Akbar. May Allah forgive us. There are two types of Nobel Awards. Some are serious. But the others are what I just said now. You deserve it for what? They've just used you to fool you and pretend to others that yes, this is what it's all about. Honestly, you tell me, how many world leaders have you seen who've pierced their tongues or their bellies or their noses as men? How many? Anyone? No one. Someone who looks at you and flicks their tongue every little while just to show you they've got some piercing in the tongue. And our youngsters do it because you know what? Television is used, the internet is used to bombard at you. It's a bombing that is far worse than that which is aerial. Bombard to make you think this is how I should be. So they show you a movie. Movie is a movie. The guy who is chasing the girl in the movie, they are not even related. Not at all. And in real life, they don't chase each other. But they are chasing to show you that, hey guy, monkey see, monkey do. Come, do. Allahu Akbar. May Allah forgive us. That's what happens. So they want you to do that, but they wouldn't do it themselves. They wouldn't. If they really did that, today, according to the movies and according to what's happening, even the music industry, people ask, why shouldn't I listen to music? Well, to be honest, go and see the Christians and the Jews who have also blocked their kids from listening to music because they confirm how dirty it is. They teach you it is hypersexualized. Music is hypersexualized. You know, what do they say in music? What do they say in it? 
Fulfill your salah. Is that what they say? Not at all. They try and liven the inside here. They want you to become sexual with someone you're not supposed to have. It's all about music and love of an anonymous person. Love. And you want to get to the, someone who's totally unknown. It's hidden. Only you know and maybe they might know, they might not know. Allahu Akbar. And, and you spend your life fantasizing. That's what it's all about. We tell you, brother, don't listen to the music. Cut it out. Read your salah, Quran. It's far more real than anything else. It's the most real speech you'd ever have is the Quran. But with Quran, we say, no, man, I, I need to listen to this. It soothes me. Where did they con you that it soothes you? It doesn't. It actually lifts you up. It actually pushes you to a degree that you push the Quran out. The more of one you have, the less of the other you will have. So you want to pull it in? You have just pushed out the word of Allah. You will become irritated when people read the Quran. When the Imam reads the Quran in Salah, you will be one to complain if he takes one minute more. Why? Your life is full of music and beat. That's all. But if Michael Jackson had to sing, you would be standing for one whole hour. Just as well he's died. He's also tired. He's probably resting. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah alone knows what has happened to him. But any other musician coming here with guitars and shaking their legs for two hours, people are standing and you don't have to sit and listen. They stand and they shake as well with them. And they, they ask you to shake. So you shake. Allahu Akbar, may Allah forgive us. And when the real shake is talking, we don't want to listen. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. My brothers, this is the reality. This is what's going on. This is what we have to protect ourselves from. Think, think very carefully. Don't just follow whatever you see. Don't just follow everything that's popular. We can be conned wholesale, wholesale, completely. What leadership quality do you have when you cannot control your private parts? So you can't control your private part, which is a small organ, subhanallah. And you want to control the whole world? It's a reality. I'm speaking to youngsters here. You know what I'm talking about. Discipline yourself. Understand Allah has given you the right to use that private part, but in a way that will please Him. Protect yourself. Ask Allah's forgiveness for what you might have done in the past. There is always hope. Last night, someone was asking me, saying, you know what? Is there tawbah for a person who has led a life of adultery or who has committed it even once? Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Ask Allah's forgiveness, regret, and, and promise Allah you won't do it again. Lead a life of purity. Start fulfilling your salah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about it in the Quran. I read those verses last night where Allah says, Illa man taba wa amana wa amila amalan Allahu Akbar. Oh, After speaking about adultery, Allah says, those people will be punished besides the one who sought forgiveness and did good deeds. For them, Allah says, we will replace the bad with good because they changed their lives. So change your life. It's not too late. Today we are seated here. Wallahi, you are my brothers. I'm sure you heard me starting by saying, May Allah grant all of us entry into Jannah. May He open our doors, the doors of Jannah for us all. I'm talking about everyone from amongst us. I don't know you in person, but I know that you are my brother in deen. I know you are sitting in the house of Allah. And we, the same way I want paradise for myself, I want it for you too. I must change my life in a way that I please Allah as much as I can and so must you please Allah as much as you can. It's not hard. There are billions of others who have done it more than a bil billions and billions who are doing it right now. If you don't get up for Salatul Fajr, you just a sore thumb. There are, if you go to the masjid, there are others who are there. They might be slightly less in number, but they are the ones who are winning. Why must they win all the time? Let me go as well. Start reading your Salatul Fajr and see how it becomes so easy to surrender to the will of Allah. If you can tackle your sleep, you can tackle a lot. Did you know that? If you can control yourself over your sleep, you can actually control yourself, inshallah, better when it comes to other things. It will be made easier when it comes to other things. 
But if you cannot control your sleep, if your sleep is so, so valuable to you, that it's more valuable than your salah, then trust me, there will be a lot of other things that you won't even be bothered about. This is why start off with salah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu sta'inu bis sabri wa salah. O you who believe, seek assistance through patience, forbearance and salah. Restrain yourself. That's also part of the meaning of sabr. Seek assistance through restraining yourself, through understanding Allah's decree, through surrendering to the decree of Allah and through praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness and ease, really. Today we are talking about leadership and the youth. My brothers and sisters, at least the brothers who are seated here in front of me, remember that we have to change our bad habits at some stage. We are getting closer to our grave. The grave does not know an age. You could go today. I could go today. I could go right here and right now. May Allah forgive me and grant me Jannah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. A winner is he who has declared his shahada, renewed that shahada, repeated the shahada, and dies upon the shahada. So if I continue, what do you gain? Have you ever thought of sin and what you actually gain from it? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. There's no big deal. A woman you've been committing adultery or fornication with or a male, for example, in the case of the women and or for example, any other bad deed. What do you really gain from it? A drug. What do you gain? I would tell you, cut smoking as well. Smoking is becoming a big thing. Why? They want you to visit the lounge at night. You know, the lounges are becoming common here in Colombo. I've seen them two, three nights in a row, mashallah. And who are they? Posh vehicles are parked there. You know, people are there. Subhanallah. I said, the Muslims, we are Muslims. Muslims, we are a small percentage, but we are the ones who are, you know, the patrons here. Allahu Akbar. So we don't have hatred for the person, but we make dua because we have hatred for the habit. The habit is a bad habit. Remember this. But today you see someone in a club and next thing you think you are so holy that you want to uh, start tweeting their name and showing photos. I took photo, look, this person was at the club. Well, it did not help you, nor did it help them. You have a quality of leadership. The concern will make you make a dua for them to start with. And then will make you want to reach out to them in a beautiful way. Not say, I'm going to get this man in trouble. Let me send his wife a picture to show him what he was doing. That's not concern. If a marriage had to be broken because of a mistake being made, everyone's marriages would be broken. Nobody here would be sitting. We're all prone to error. We all make mistakes, mistakes of different natures. And sometimes Allah covers and Allah conceals because He loves you. And sometimes He exposes because He loves you. Some people, they change their bad habits when they realize that Allah has concealed. Some people change their bad habits after Allah exposes. So both of them can be a gift of Allah. Do you get the point? So Allah covers you, keeps on covering you. And if you change, Alhamdulillah, if you don't, He might say, I love you so much. Let me expose you because when I was covering you, you didn't change. When I expose you, you might change. So when you're exposed, quickly change. Oh Allah, Astaghfirullah, we are there for Salatul Fajr. Why? Because I've got a court case. Something happened. May Allah forgive us all. So remember this. We turn to Allah. The sins will never help us. When, you, when we get into the Akhirah, we will realize how short life was. Very, very short. Allah didn't tell you that tie yourself down and don't enjoy yourself in the world. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself as much as you can within the limits of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't forget Allah. Don't take Him out of the equation. You want to marry? Subhanallah. This evening we will be talking about tying the knot. Let me keep that for the evening inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. But there is a lot that I need to say. And it, inshallah for myself and then for everyone else. And that brings me to another point. My brothers and sisters, youth who are seated here this afternoon or this morning, let me tell you something. Protect yourself from arrogance. Don't think for a moment that you are a big deal. Because that's the very moment you become a small deal or no deal at all. If you think you have got authority and that's what gives you the right to put your nose up in the air, there are others who have more authority than you, but they are humble, very humble. They will talk, they will greet, they will mix. They are, you know, lovely human beings. 
If you think you are good looking, there are people who are much more good looking than you, but they are humble. If you think you have wealth, there are people far wealthier than you. Perhaps you'll be shocked to know how much they have, but they are humble. They are found in the first saf in Salah. They are found in the masjid. They are people who greet others. They are concerned for others. When there is a problem, they don't go and spread the problem, but they want to spread a solution to the problem. So remember, if you are in authority, there are people in greater authority than you, but they are humble. If you think Allah has blessed you, so that's what entitles you to be arrogant or to be aloof. Allah has blessed others with more, but they are down to earth. These blessings of Allah are actually tests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah wants to test you. What will you do when I've given you? The same way he will test you. What will you do when I take away from you? This is why every single business on earth, without a single exception, the profit margin differs from day to day. And sometimes you go into loss. So today I made a profit, huge profit. For one year I made a big profit. Suddenly business is bad. Sometimes I made a loss. But there is no business on earth where every single day the profit is exactly the same. No, not even one. Because Allah is testing you. One day you have more, one day you have less, one day you don't have, one day you have to pay. How are you going to react? It's my test. Once all your tests are over, you die. It's a fact. How many tests are you going to have? Allah knows. Perhaps 75,493 tests, then you'll die. So every day you are tested. I'm just giving you an example. There might be 700,000 tests. But every day there's a Fajr test, Dhuhr, another test, and so on. Every day there are tests. You passed it or you failed it, subhanallah. If you pass those tests, you become a leader because your qualities are automatically built by the fact that you are adopting the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The laws and regulations that Allah has stipulated. You are disciplining yourself. You look at the opposite sex with respect, not with lust. Today, I cannot put a percentage. You can put a percentage on your own. What percentage of people do you think when they look at the opposite sex, someone who's decently dressed and they start you know, thinking wrong, wrong ideas. Rather, it's someone's wife. They say, so what? A'udhu billah. That's the attitude today. That's the attitude. Why? Because we've turned away from the purpose of existence. We don't understand why we are in this world. So you look at the opposite sex with lust rather than with respect. Islam tells the woman, respect yourself. Do you know the crisis we have today? A woman might leave her home with her parents thinking, wow, my daughter's dressed so beautifully. And somewhere down the road, she feels the urge to expose herself without realizing that I'm just becoming a mere sex object. Men look at me and they whistle and they give me attention when I've got legs that are well shaved. I've got legs that are well shaped and they think, why shouldn't I show my hair and so on. So they leave the home okay. And when they get down the road, they will take off whatever they're wearing and they're left with almost nothing. People whistle, people abuse, people misuse, people actually throw like toilet paper, you know, take it, use it and recycle it. Toilet paper, they flush it down the loo once it's used. This, they take it, they use it, they recycle it and they hand it around to others to use. They can frame you, they can blackmail you. And at the end of the day, you say, I was abused by so and so when you asked for trouble. So the problem is both sides. The problem is both sides. We are not saying one is innocent and the other is guilty. No, both are guilty. Maybe one more than the other. But do you realize that by removing your clothing in order to, to live up to what the, the television and the internet is teaching you is freedom, is actually enslaving yourself to the same TV and the same internet and the same so-called freedom. Imagine if someone were to tell you that this type of behavior enslaves you to freedom. You won't understand what that means. What it means is, it enslaves you to the term that is being abused, that is freedom, yet it is not freedom, it is actually enslaving. Why? You enslave to the opposite sex. Today, a woman doesn't feel, meaning the, the young girls that are growing up today, they don't feel complete until they expose themselves if they are deep into the television and deep into all the norms and the adverts and, and, and everything that is aggressively marketed on the globe today. They don't feel normal if they don't show.
The same applies a boy doesn't feel normal if his hairstyle is not like this and he hasn't got the flick coming down like a hedgehog with a lot of gel on it and so on. You know, he doesn't feel normal if he doesn't show half his backside. And this is a problem that's been around now for the last seven, eight years or ten perhaps. And it's increasing. You know, they, b before they used to show a little bit of the backside. Now it's more than half. I wonder what will happen in two years time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. And, and then we want to say leadership, leadership, leading you to do what? Shaitan is also a leader. Remember this. He leads people to, he to hell. So pe people can become those who follow the devil. And this is why Allah says, Allahu Akbar. I am going to fill Jahannam with you, O Iblis, and anyone who follows you. Which means you will lead a, a path and you will lead people to a certain direction. Those who follow you, they will follow you where you are going as well. So be careful whom you are following. Be careful what path you are following. And this is how we will be able to create leadership. This is how we will be able to protect ourselves. Do not feel the urge to do what everyone else is doing. Get into the right company. Look carefully. Think. It's like pornography. People use WhatsApp to send each other pornographic material and they think it's just a joke. Wallahi, it contaminates the mind. Which leader would send on WhatsApp images that are pornographic and get a kick out of it? Why would you do that? What did you achieve? When you get in your grave, that might be the thing that's going to embarrass you. Allahu Akbar. You know why? You receive it, you forwarded it. That's all you did. Think for a moment what happened. You sent it to people thinking it's just a joke, but it was so dirty, it contaminated people. Some people might have committed rape as a result and you were involved. How were you involved? You encouraged it by sending them something that aroused them to the degree they couldn't do anything about it. They fell into masturbation. They fell into, uh, for example, running after women and going into rape and so on, which is unacceptable, totally unacceptable. But what happened? It was your little videos that you kept on sending. So stop it. Don't send them a good message, a positive reminder, a lovely, even if it's something minor, you know, something, an advert of a good thing, which doesn't have bad in it. Send it. No problem. Laugh at something. Send a little joke. Some people believe to joke is wrong. I believe to joke is okay within the limits. Yes, you can. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Really. So my beloved youth, I see... I see a blessed future by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Insha'Allah, insha'Allah, insha'Allah. We just need to be disciplined. We need to attend salah. We need to leave our bad habits. We need to be people who are following the deen. Islam is being fought because, because by following it, every single Muslim has leadership qualities in him and her. Every Muslim, you can be a leader. Why are you very disciplined? That's exactly what you need to be a leader. So when people don't want you to compete with them in leadership, they just drop you aside. So then you think, oh, I'm doing myself a favor, not realizing it's very depressing to follow the fast lane that leads you to the nightlife. Very depressing. With us, we believe if you don't have something constructive to do, go to bed, go to bed. After Salatul Isha. You don't have something constructive to do, go to bed. It's better for you to be snoring and sleeping than those who come tomorrow morning and say, where were you? We were at the club. We did this and we did that. You say, Allah saved me from it because I follow the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu to go to sleep if I've got nothing constructive to do after Salatul Isha. 99% of sins of that nature are committed in the night. You were saved just because you went to sleep. This is why they say sleep is also an act of worship when done at the right time, right place, and right quantity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. So my beloved youth, I've spoken quite a bit. I've said a lot, alhamdulillah. I've spoken perhaps for half an hour or a little bit more than half an hour. And I hope and I pray that uh, whatever I've said will be taken in the correct sense. You know, if someone wants to misunderstand, if someone wants to misunderstand, then you need to know one thing. Even the best words that you've uttered can be misunderstood. If someone wants to misunderstand, even the best words that are uttered can be misunderstood. How many people misunderstood the Quran? 
because they wanted to. So don't misunderstand what has been said. We have not said anything bad or blasphemous. You know, we have not said anything evil. All I did is encourage you to be better Muslimin because by following Islam, you will be able to be the leaders of tomorrow. Without following it, trust me, the leadership will have a deficit and there will be something wrong in it and you won't be able to succeed. And I started off by saying, remove hatred from your heart and I'm ending by saying the same thing. Please, my brothers and sisters, remove hatred from your heart. Be careful of those who spread hatred because we are worried about the next war in the Muslim Ummah. It may be between brothers who really got along with each other, but because they taunted each other and because they spoke derogatory, they spread hatred. That is why they might start fighting in a way that would result in a huge inferno within the Ummah. We don't want that to happen, but we see it coming, the way things are going. The way people use the pulpit in order to swear others wrong, totally wrong. Bear in mind, it does not need a rocket scientist to grade the speakers who speak to you. It does not need a rocket scientist. Some will come in full of hatred, venom from the beginning to the end. They won't have anything constructive besides swearing the other man. And others will come in with goodness, convincing you to read Salah, to build yourself. Brother, I have a difference with you. Big deal. We all have differences. All my five fingers are different. Do you see that? But they are part of one hand. Part of one hand. If I say, okay, this finger doesn't get along with the other one because it's a little bit bigger and the other one is shorter and so on. Wallahi, we won't be able to pick anything up. In order to pick anything up with your fingers, you need the help of more than one finger. So as an ummah, the same rule applies. Be careful, really be careful. Be careful of those who want to try and tell you you are the only finger in this hand. Be careful of that. You are not the only finger. The others might be longer or shorter, but they are part of the same hand, the same ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So like I said, and I repeat, do not, it does not need a rocket scientist to know the difference between those who try to teach us hatred and enmity and who try to find the smallest reason to split us. That's what we are doing today. Whereas we are taught by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to find the smallest reason to unite us. The smallest common factor must make us love one another. Today, there are people who preach the opposite, that you must look for the smallest thing that this man does that's different from you and then call him names and throw him out of the picture, have hatred for him. If you have the opportunity to beat him up, beat him up. That's what we are taught. That's the ummah. We call that Islam. We are proud about it. Where? Brothers and sisters, watch what is happening on the globe. Just look at it. Just listen to it. And you will see that that is not what we want. Not at all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all. May He make us those who make a difference. Who would like to see problems and issues and fighting? No one wants to see that. No matter where you are on the globe. So study those countries where this has happened and protect yourself from that. And understand and realize we are one. Subhanallah, reach out to the ummah. Reach out to humanity. Reach out to those in your country who are not Muslimin. Reach out to them in a beautiful way. And you will see what will happen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all and may he grant us ease and goodness. Wa sallallahu wa sallama ala nabina Muhammad. I think I was asked uh, perhaps if possible to take a few questions maybe related to the topic. Uh, I really don't know how to start because everyone seems like they have a question. MashaAllah. Uh, everyone is looking at me as though they have a question. Don't you have a question Zakwan? You don't have? Okay, MashaAllah, that's one down. Okay. Alhamdulillah. It's a pity I don't know all the names, otherwise I would have asked everyone in person. MashaAllah, Barakallah. I think uh, Salat al Dhuhr is very near. We've got about five more minutes, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, the reason why we are here this morning, this was something that was perhaps planned a little bit later, but to speak to the youth. And uh, the idea is, my brothers and sisters, we need unity. We need to be united. Unity does not mean, does not mean you need to think the same. No. Unity does not mean you need to be the same. Unity does not mean that everything must be similar. No. Unity means you will tolerate each other with the differences that you have. You will live and let live. Then you are united. Remember this. I am united with you. I have differences. My wife and my children and everyone totally different from yours. The food I like is completely different, but we can go to the same restaurant and enjoy. Do you know why? In the menu is something I like, something you like. We ordered two different things, but I still ate. The food was halal. That's it. Did you get the point? Food is halal. So within that framework of Islam and the Sharia, 
Alhamdulillah, you might be Shafi, Hanafi, Maliki, Salafi, whoever, whatever. We don't hate one another. Remember this. We are united. We are united. But we will have perhaps something different about us. It doesn't make us, look, I'm standing in front of you. Wallahi, in my heart, I don't have space for hatred. I'm telling you that now. And how did it happen? It's very, very hard. I worked hard on myself to force myself to say, listen, the man is different. Why do you want to hate him? Don't hate him. And it took years to develop that. Remove that hatred. Take it out. I don't have space for it. You know, you, you can actually die with depression, with sugar, with every other problem. May Allah grant cure to those who do have any of these problems. But sometimes it's caused because you have too much hatred in you. You want everything to happen your way. I believe that everything does not need to happen my way. A lot of the times things do not happen my way, but I'm still in love with the people that I address. Wallahi. Today, if you, if you take a careful look and you try and understand, you'll be able to feel this love. You'll be able to understand, yes, indeed, there is love between us. But do I know you in person? No, perhaps I don't. But Wallahi, you are my brother. I don't need to know the details of what you've done in life because you are answerable to Allah, not to me. You are answerable to Allah, not to me. So my brother, my job is, you know, to show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I care for you just like he cares for you because he made you. So he loves you. Subhanallah. He knows that you've committed things that are bad. He knows that I might have done things that are bad, but he's forgiving and he will forgive. And we need to encourage one another to get closer to Allah. That's all we did tonight. Or should I say this afternoon? Subhanallah. So remember the term unity. People think, oh, these guys are not united. These guys, no, we are united. But we do not know how to handle difference of opinion sometimes. That's what it is. We are very united. We are one ummah. We have one shahada. We have one nabi. We have one qibla. We've heard that so many times. We have one in everything. And we will have differences of opinion. That does not make us disunited. No. But sometimes we don't know how to handle difference of opinion. So sometimes some of our leaders also instigate us in a way that we become people who make difference of opinion reason for us to hate the other. No, it shouldn't be. I have a difference of opinion, just like I have a difference of opinion regarding food, regarding something else, the car. Some people say this new Honda that is out, the hybrid looks so beautiful. Oh, that's the best car ever. And someone else will say, no, the new C-Class that's out is the best car ever. Does it mean I'm never talking to you again in my life? We are disunited. My brother, it's a car. Come on, you drive the car. I will drive the car. We are still going all to Jannah, inshallah. We will still get to Candy and Gaul because the road is quite good, mashallah. Subhanallah. So the same applies. My aim is Jannah. Your aim is Jannah. I might be making a mistake or two. You're making a mistake or two. We could discuss. We are not disunited. Don't let people make you believe that we are disunited. No, we have difference of opinion that we don't know how to handle. How do you handle it? You handle it with tolerance, with respect, with good words, with kind words. You still greet a person even though you differ. If someone teaches you to say you differ with this man, don't greet him. That man is planting the seeds of a civil war. That's what he's doing. Be careful. One day it can erupt. The hatred level must never ever get beyond that. No way. Watch your heart. Someone greets you, Assalamu alaikum, no matter how different they are from you, you respond to them, Wa alaikum assalam, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's an instruction in the Quran. If it was not that important, it would not be in the Quran. Not at all. Did Allah tell you, open his heart? Open his heart and see if he's exactly the same as you reply. If he's not, don't. Is that what the Quran says? No. The Quran says, Wa idha huyitum. The term huyitum means it's come from a totally different angle altogether. It means you don't know where it's come from. Huyitum. When you are greeted, then you reply with a better greeting. That's what the Quran says. Or give it back equally. The Quran didn't say when a Muslim greets you and you must check his heart and open it. And if he thinks exactly the same as you, then say, wa alaykum as -salam. If not, just say, huh. But there are people who do this across the globe. People who look at you and they, you tell them, Assalamu alaykum. Brother, what's wrong with you? My brother, do you follow the same Quran? Well, I love you. If you don't love me, it's your problem. That's the attitude. I care for you, my brother. You might call me a non-Muslim. You might call me whatever you want. I know I owe it to Allah, not to you. But I love you. If you have so much space in your heart that you have space for hatred as well, it's your sickness, not mine. But I will carry on. I have not lost sleep. 
you will lose the sleep. We spread this love. This is what leadership is all about. Leadership is when you are able to bring people together, when you are able to, to make people understand that the commonalities are far more than the little differences that we have. So I'd like to say we are united as an ummah. We are definitely united. But we don't know how to handle difference of opinion. So we think we are disunited. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us, protect us, grant us all ease and goodness, inshallah.